was like one or two satisfied with one or two yeah Yeah. it was just like there's two there's two more there's four of them There are no creatures that captivate birders the same way that owls do. Whether it's their mysterious nocturnal lifestyle, their wise appearance, or their rarity, there's no question that these birds generate a lot of excitement. Although owls are grouped together as one broad category of birds, they actually come in all different shapes, sizes, and ways of behaving. Today, my friend Tim and I are out looking for a species that acts quite different than most other owls. Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Badgerland Birding, and today I'm out in a place called Paradise Valley, and I'm looking for short-eared owls. Short-eared owls are found on many different continents, including North America, Europe, South America, and Asia, with some reports even occurring in Africa. In the United States, they typically move south in the winter, inhabiting most of the lower 48 states in any given year. But even if they are in the area, they aren't always easy to find. Short-eared owls are a really cool species of owl. They kind of act like harriers and usually come out around dawn or dusk. A couple of them have been seen here recently, so I'm hoping that I can get a look at them, but they seem kind of hit or miss. Like sometimes they'll show up in daylight and you can get good looks at them. Sometimes they'll show up after dark and you can't see, and then sometimes they don't show up at all. So we'll see if we can find some of these awesome birds and hopefully I can get some good videos for you guys. In the woods surrounding the parking lot, I encountered downy woodpeckers, hairy woodpeckers, and dark-eyed juncos. Once Tim arrived, we began our walk out to where the best short-eared owl habitat is. Along the way, we found an American kestrel up in the trees, a rough-legged hawk taking off from its perch, and numerous American tree sparrows in the tall grasses and cattails. Flying above was a flock of mallards, and in the distance was a massive flock of Canada geese. It could have been possible that a few other species were mixed in, but unfortunately they were too far out to tell. A ways out, we spotted a bird that tends to live in the same habitat as short-eared owls, the northern harrier. Northern harriers look very similar to short-eared owls in terms of their coloration, but have a longer tail, smaller head, and smoother way of flying, making them easier to discern. Seeing harriers can be a good sign that the area is right for short-eared owls as well. After walking for a while, we noticed something else flying low in the distance. We then heard the raspy, barking call of our target species. Just found a bunch of short-eared owls with a couple of harriers too. It's really cool to see them hunting and flapping out here. There's at least six of them, we think, so really nice that they are willing to come out in the daytime for us. The short-eared owl is a bird of grasslands and fields with few trees and lots of open space. They are brown in coloration with mottled patterns of darker and lighter feathers on their back and barring on their wingtips. Short-eared owls have a pale face and as their name would suggest, extremely short and barely noticeable ear tufts. They have a lighter underside with streaking that can vary in heaviness based on the individual bird or the location they live in. During breeding season, this species flies during both day and night, but in winter they are usually seen more often around dawn or dusk. Shorty dolls are extremely acrobatic in flight and can be seen changing directions quickly, suddenly dropping to catch prey. Small rodents are typical fare for this owl species, but they're also known to eat larger mammals and birds. One of my favorite things about them is the way they fly because they're like, they're moth-like. Their up flap is faster than their down flap, which is really different than really any other other bird. They're so maneuverable too. Yeah, they cut really fast. You can see when they when they get something that they want, they just they turn around and dive. They have to be one of the most acrobatic owls. The fact that they're prairie birds, they move back and forth a lot, whereas like great gray owls. Are Whatever, they, just, they sit there. <laughs> they just sit. We spent some time watching the short-eared owls from the end of the trail. While we were there, we counted as many as seven of them swooping across the grasses of Paradise Valley. During our viewing, the owls were extremely active. 
We even got to see them interact with each other, as they would occasionally get into territorial skirmishes. Oh, this was successful. I didn't have this, uh, the numbers in mind. I was like, I'm one or two. Satisfied with one or two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was just that like, mean... there's two, there's two more, yeah. there's four of them. Eventually, the light started to fade, and we could barely make out the owl's silhouettes, signaling to us that it was time to head out. Even if you've been a birder for a while, there's always something special about a day when you get to see owls particularly a species as interesting as the short-eared owl. It was fun to witness the aerial display put on by these birds, and I'll be looking forward to the next time I'm lucky enough to encounter them again. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Where it's like, great gray owls, or whatever they just... They sit there. <laughs> they just sit. Lazy bones. <laughs>